was a test of my spiritual gifts. Because what I could have done is I could have, I could have put up some fingers, you know, and you take, you take a few down, y'all get it, right? You know, I don't need five, I'm going, I just need one. And, and you know, because that was a day when, when I would go on and do that, you know. But then I got to thinking, well, I'm here for this E.K. Bailey conference, and ain't no telling. I got to thinking, you know, maybe one of my members are somewhere close. And, you know, and I said, well, <laughs> it ain't worth it. It ain't, it ain't worth it. But I sure want, I, I didn't need five for her. I just needed one finger would have, would have just solved my whole issue. You know, I would have got it over, felt better, and gone back to the room feeling good. But she, that was a test of my spiritual gift. And I'm saying to you, you will be tested like that on a day to day. If it's not somebody on the road, it'll be somebody in your family, it'll be somebody on your job. It'll be a lot of times somebody in the church. This is the best place to be tested. And the reason why is not so much that people are cantankerous and and people are just hypocrites and all that. Well, all of us are cantankerous and hypocrites. All of us are. So that's not the reason, but it's because wherever you have a lot of people, you're going to have a lot of problems. And wherever you have a lot of problems, you're going to have a lot of sin. And wherever there's a lot of sin, there's going to be some confrontation and conflict. Now, having said that, in verses 1 through 3, he is dealing with a test of the Spirit's control. And I called this this morning, uh, get in where you fit in. All right. And I'd like to expound upon that same subject as we look at the preceding verses in the text. Allow me to walk through this text with you, all right? And I want to start at chapter 12, verse number four. I'll not have a stand for the sake of time, and uh, I'll not read the balance of the text because we need to go on and jump in there, all right? In verse one, rather four, notice what's going on here, particularly in verses four through 11. The apostle is, by and large, dealing with the diversity of the gifts that we have. And when we speak of the word diversity of gifts, what we're talking about is that those gifts differ. Everybody has various and differing gifts. Your gift may not be my gift. My gift may not be your gift. Uh, we have uniquely different gifts that God gives to each of us, but he gives it to us for a reason. And you ought not have spiritual gifts and not know the gifts that you have. You ought to be able to identify the fact that you do have spiritual gifts. That's, for example, like a person who drives in a car and he gets or she gets pulled over and the policeman walks up and says, uh, where's your license? Uh, I know of someone in my family. I won't say who, but I know of someone in my family uh, was driving a little fast on the road and there's someone in my family they know that if you go in this area that uh, you know the police is always in that area and uh, somebody in my family I won't say who but somebody in my family uh, got pulled over and uh, and so they got pulled over and uh, I'm told that somebody in my family uh, said uh, to the policeman, sir, I am so sorry. Know that I was wrong. Uh, I was going too fast. A lot of things on my mind. Uh, telling the truth so that the truth is set out there. And maybe having told the truth that, in fact, the policeman will have some grace because you told the truth. And so somebody in my family uh, was sitting in the car and, and the policeman, I'm told, went back to the car and uh, began to call in the license and found out there was nothing wrong, no, no need to pull this person over and take them in. And so the policeman came back to that somebody in my family and, uh, and said, uh, well, um, listen, just do me a favor and slow down. Now, what if somebody in my family didn't have their license? What if somebody in my family didn't tell the truth about their guilt and having broken and violated the crime, the law? 
What do you think then that policeman would be prone and set to do? But because got a driver's license, told the truth, now this thing is becoming a spiritual matter, using the spirit's gift of truth, using the spirit's gift of hope, it returns back to you, not void, but always profiting on the investment. But what if that person didn't have driver's license? And I'm just wondering how many folk in this church are driving this car of Christianity without driver's license. I'm just wondering. And it, it, it makes no sense to be going fast and, and getting caught and then you can't give an accounting of who you really are on this road. You see? And so Paul was dealing with that. And so in verse 4 he says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. He's saying there are many gifts, but there's one Spirit who gives the many gifts. There are many ministries at Mount Gilead. There are many people at Mount Gilead. There are many things to do. There are many tasks. There are many issues, many tests, many trials, but there's one spirit who helps us through it all. Do you see that? In verse 5 he says there are differences of ministries but the same Lord. Now I want to walk fast through this because I want to get to the heart of what I think sums up this chapter as we get there, I'll tell you. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. In verse 6, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. You're beginning now to see the unity in the diversity. In verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. God manifests himself through the spirit, gives us gifts that we might know what those gifts are, not for us only, but that we might be a blessing to the people and the body of which we are a part. For in verse 8 he says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Why do we think it's so spooky in the Missionary Baptist Church uh, for someone to be anointed with oil? The healing does not come from the person who's doing the anointing. The healing comes from God. It is through obedience that we do what we do. In verse 10, he says, To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. Is there anything wrong with speaking in tongues? Yes. When you speak in tongues and there is no interpreter, then there's something wrong. But there's nothing wrong alone with speaking in tongues because it is a spiritual gift given by God to some in the body. To another, the interpretation of tongues. He just, this, this is where we are. So if, we, if you're going to speak in tongues, now I didn't, don't know what I said. Okay, so don't think I spoke in time. I'm just trying to give you an example, all right? But somebody, okay? And you sitting there saying, wow, what is that? Well, that puts the emphasis on me and not on the one who gave the word for you to speak in that tongue. But if I say, and then I go and Nathaniel James says, tell me, the Lord will provide your needs according to his riches and glory. All right, now that means the attention is not on me. The attention is on the word of God that was spoken through me by another tongue, but it was interpreted so all could be blessed. Do you see the differences there? All right, now in verse 11, but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. God gives us what he wants to give us as he wills. Don't get upset when you hear somebody who can yank it and sing and you can't just be happy that they can. 
And we got to get over this thing. Let me say this from the pulpit. Get this on the tape. Uh, older members ought not be jealous of younger members just because you can't do it that way anymore. But there's no way for us to grow. You getting older and you won't admit you're getting older. You know you can't sing that thing the way you used to. Uh, and, and, and listen, use your pastor as an example. Uh, last week, I tried my best to sing We Are One. And, and uh, uh, Sister Myrie looked at me as if I had lost my everlasting mind. I'm sitting here struggling. I'm struggling now. I'm, I'm trying to... And, you know, I'm trying to get it together. I'm all out of key and everything. And I'm trying to get it together. And Sister Myrie looked at me like, now, if you're going to do it, do it right. I got it. And at 8 o'clock, I didn't do it. <laughs> and I ain't doing it at 11 o'clock until I have some time to meet with the, with the musicians. And I'm going to try it next week. But if you know you can't do a thing... You know what I'm saying? Don't get mad at somebody who can. Are you with me? We got to be real, y'all. I'm just afraid sometimes we just be faking it to make it. And we, we got to just go and be real. All right. Now look at verse 12. Um, he now moves into speaking of, and all I'm trying to do is walk you through this. And then I'm going to try to lift out the heart of the text here in just a minute. Uh, in verse 12, he says, for as the body is one and has many members, all right, the body is one. Think of a body. Think of a, put a body. I want you to put a body in your mind. Look at yourself now in the mirror, standing up, the body. He, as, as the body is one and has many members, now see yourself in that mirror. I want you to see yourself in that mirror. Now I want you to see yourself moving your hand, all right? All right, everybody move your right hand for just a minute. Just play along with me for just a minute. Even if you got off, or just come on, play, play with me for a minute. All right, now just move your left hand if you would, all right? All right? Now, if you don't mind, just shake your head. All right, just lift up your right foot and your left foot. Now, do you see all those things that the one body can do? But what if the body, every, every part of the body just wanted to be a right hand? I mean, if the, every part of the body wanted to be a right hand, we never could get the diversity of that left hand, the feet being moved, and the head being sh uh, shaken and so forth. We, we would never get to that place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And brothers and sisters, when we allow in the church body and the assembly, when we allow just the deacons to do praying and just the ministers to preach, and just, just the leaders to lead and just somebody else to teach. Well, what is the body doing? What is the body missing out on? And whenever the body is missing out on something, it is because we are not as a whole operating in our spiritual gifts. Am I making sense to you? How many of you can cook in here? Raise your hand. Just trying to get an idea. All right, we're coming over your house this afternoon. Hey, man, baby, you ain't even got to cook this afternoon. I mean, shucks, it's too many people to pick around. <laughs> hey, man. All right, how many of you honestly cannot cook? All right, just gone ready. Okay, we're not coming over y'all's house. We're not coming over there. All right, now let me show you something. Can you think for a moment how much we could benefit as a body called Mount Gilead? from those who could cook if we needed to have homecoming. If all the folk who could cook would just help us out. Are you feeling what I'm saying? Guess what all of those gifts would do? It would bless the entire bunch. Are you following what I'm saying? And so I'm saying we are not able then to progress to make uh, any leeway ahead when we've got folk who have a gift and they're not using it. Uh, I'll give you another example. Um, I call her Sister Granny. Uh, Sister Neil, would you please stand? Sister Neil, I want y'all to give her a big old hand. Give Sister Neil a hand. Amen. Amen. 
And I know she won't mind me saying this. Sister Neil is well over 80 years old. All right? And yet, I cannot count on my hand many days that she hadn't had that white usher's uniform on. Come on, give her, give her a hand. Now, now, let me show you something. She's in her 80s. All right? I'm 46, for those of you who wanted to know. Y'all been wanting to know my age. And I told my wife, now that I'm getting older, I don't mind saying I'm 46 now. Because I need you to know I'm getting younger. I'm getting younger. I'm getting... Um, but I'm 46 years old. And there are times when I'm tired and I look at Sister Neil. I'm not kidding you. Standing on that door, I start getting a little strength. Okay, because she's 46 times some, plus some, all right? And um, so what, what I'm trying to say to you all, uh, she's been asking for uh, some more ushers. And uh, anybody who is under 20, please stand. If you're under 20 years old, please stand. Under 20. Under 20, stand up. Under 20. Look at this. All right. Now, if you are 30 and understand, just stand on up. Stand on up. Stand up. If you're still under 20, stand. 30 and understand. 30 and under. You're 31. Now, I'm going to get to you. I'm gonna, he wants me to get to him. All right. 40 and under. 40 and understand. 40 and under. If you're 40 and understand. Well, let's just take this group. Let's just take this group. I want y'all to look around. Look at the cream of the crop. I mean, just look at it. At the cream of the crop of people who are much younger than Sister Frances Neal, who are able to stand right now. All you got to do is take some accountability and just walk them feet, walk them feet, walk them feet down to just a door. All right, thank you all for standing. Pastor, just trying to be practical. I ain't going to hoop today. I don't even feel like hooping. I, I need to teach you all some stuff, man. I, I, went, I went to E.K. Bailey Conference and came back saying, you know what? Mount Gilead is the bomb. Mount Gilead is a good church. Mount Gilead can do more. And uh, the Lord helped me to understand that glad you just got to ask right. You just got to ask right. You got to ask right. And you got to keep on asking. So I've made the sermon about asking today. I, I, I ain't, ain't no secret to it. I'm asking. I'm working this thing. I'm, and I'll be finished. Y'all give me five more minutes. Ain't no hoop. I'm sorry. Daniel, no need to go to the organ today. I mean, I ain't hooping. I ain't hooping. I, 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 eight o'clock this morning, I didn't get sweated up. I wouldn't, eight, I didn't have to change. And, and shucks, this feel pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to just talk to you a minute. All right. Now, let's, let's look at something. Are you getting anything? Okay, because I'm not doing an exhaustive study of these verses. I'm really just walking through the text. And I hope to get over to the part here in just a minute where I really want to open some things up to you. For as the body in verse 12 is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body. Now this is where I want to open some things up to you. Uh, because it gets to this whole thing of being one. Being many are one body, so also is Christ. Being many but are of one body, so also is Christ. There is no way you can pull God out of Jesus and pull Jesus out of God. They are one. And listen, beloved brothers and sisters, it ought to be, this is the prayer that Christ gives in John 17. There ought to be no way for you to pull you out of me and for me to pull me out of you. We ought to be one. And the only way that we can actually get to that place is we've got to kind of love what 
it is about me, what it is about you, in order for us to be on the spiritual oneness plane. All right? I got on the plane. You know, has anybody ever flown? All right. I got on the plane, and uh, I don't fly much. I don't like flying much. I like driving. But uh, I just couldn't see 10 hours going to, to Dallas, Texas. And, uh, but do you know what driving on a plane will do? It'll make you pray better. <laughs> sure. I, I didn't know I had so much to tell the Lord until, until I, I got to the airport <laughs> and, and, uh, and was getting ready to get into that plane. And I, I walked on in that plane and, and sat down and, and they would start, and this is what got me right here, y'all. I'm talking about many things going on but one body. There were many people on this plane, right? But one controller. I mean, it was people all over the plane. In fact, every seat in the plane was full. It was filled. And so I got to thinking, and they said, now... In the case of a sudden emergency, you take the seatbelt, you take the seatbelt out and you go in in this and you, and then you fasten the seatbelt. In the case of a, of, a, of a sudden landing where there is an emergency, a sudden landing where there is an emergency, take the oxygen, put it on, and then, you know, the, the stewardess has showed you all this. And I'm thinking to myself, what you really mean is if we crash. I mean, I mean, I like the way you're saying this. You, you're making me think, you know, to be careful. I like, but, but what you, you mean really, if we crash, then, you, you know, you need to have the seatbelts on. And you, if, if you go down in the water, something, you need some oxygen, you need to have this on. And I'm thinking to myself, if we crash, what difference does it make if I got the seatbelts on? Y'all with me? And so now we're taking off and we're going up and this plane starts and then the, the captain comes up there's going to be just a little turbulence. We've got a little turbulence going in the air. Uh, just please stay buckled. And I'm like, yeah, we got a lot of turbulence. And I wasn't listening to him. You know what I got to do it again? Lord, Father, please help this plane. God, if you don't mind, just give me a few more days. I want to I wanna be able to go to the E.K. Bailey conference and and Father, I just believe you got a few more things for me to do at Mount Gilead. Lord, don't take me away from my family. I want to see my grandchildren. I, want... I mean, you'd be surprised how it informs your prayer life. Brothers and sisters, when we don't see that God is the captain over all our rocket planes, we will miss praying to him about the help that only he can provide. Somebody in here needs to pray. <laughs> that baby heard me scream. And she's... <laughs> Bless your heart, sugar. I was trying to do that for them and it got the little child. <laughs> Y'all sat there like, okay. <laughs> and baby sat there. She's, oh my God. I was trying to flex my volume so you would get it. <laughs> and you just sat there like, okay. Anyhow, boy, preaching is hard work. All right. Didn't even work. You know what I mean? Get the child got it, but I, okay. Um, so verse 13, look, look carefully. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks. In other words, it does not matter who you are. It does not matter. Black, white, Jew, Greek, you know. Uh, it, it does not matter who you are. It matters that you are one in him. And what makes us one in him is the spirit from him. Whether slaves or free, does not matter. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. Verse 14. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am a, a, a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Look at this. And if the earth should say, because I am not an eye, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would 
be the hearing. If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling but now God has set the members each one of them in the body just as he pleased everybody is in this body just as God has been pleased to bring you don't play a hate on my role and I won't play a hate on your role because we all have a role assigned by God in the body verse 18 But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body keeps playing on one. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head of the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Quit Quit saying I'm not going to church today because all of them people are doing wrong. Can I tell you something? You're doing wrong. You just haven't been caught in the church yet. Everybody's doing something wrong. That's not a good excuse or an acceptable excuse not to be with the body. I don't like that church. Too many hypocrites over there. Come on, you, you need to join us. We all have hypocrisy. We all got problems. I mean, let's have a hypocrite day. I mean, maybe we need to get over friends and family day and just have a hypocrite day. Because if we have a hypocrite day, the whole church ought to be full. I mean, from back there to back there, all the way up here. I mean, literally, we ought to be putting out chairs like on hypocrite day that we put out on Easter. Because there are a lot of hypocrites. I mean, on to the one holding the mic, you know, uh, from one, can I get a hypocrite, amen. You know, and I mean, just hypocrite to hypocrite. We all are hypocrites. And if it were not for Jesus, if it were not for God blessing us, helping us despite of us, we would not be able to be who we are even today. Verse 21, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the head, to the feet, I have no need of you. And verse 22, no much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. We need weak members because we got to have the strong helping the weak. Everybody can't just be strong at the same time. Somebody's got to be weak in order to get strong. Verse 23, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, of, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable uh, parts have greater modesty. Not everybody in here has a corporate job. Not everybody in here lives in a two-story, three-story, four-story house. Somebody in here lives in an apartment, but somebody else lives in a house. Somebody in here drives a hoopty, but somebody else in here drives a Mercedes. Somebody in here lives in a project. Somebody else lives in a trailer park. What well, does that make the person who does not live in the trailer park and the project any better than the one?